If your blood pressure is not responding to medications, it's poorly controlled, you're having severe organ damage and your life is at great risk, no matter the age of your baby, even if the baby has no chance of survival, that baby is going to be delivered immediately to save your own life. What's up beautiful people? Welcome to another exciting episode of Labor Room with your pregnancy partner, Dr. O. And today we are discussing a very important topic. Important and interesting. Now this topic is very important because a lot of people these days are actually being diagnosed of this condition in pregnancy. So it's actually more common than it used to be. And we really cannot tell why, but it's common and it's something you should know. If you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, you need to be aware of this condition so you know what to look out for and you can get to the hospital immediately to get help. So let's jump right into it. We're discussing preeclampsia. So that sounds like such a big word, like what on earth is preeclampsia? Okay, so this is when someone that is pregnant, that is a pregnant woman, has high blood pressure, also known as hypertension, and then she has other signs of organ damage like protein in the urine. Protein in the urine could be a sign of kidney damage, right? So when, she, when these at least high blood pressure and sign of organ damage are diagnosed, right? Then we say that the woman has preeclampsia. But now some people have hypertension even before they get pregnant. Those are not the people we are talking about, right? Preeclampsia normally starts around 20 weeks of gestation or later, right? So if you had hypertension before you get pregnant, that's not preeclampsia, right? But if you never had been hypertensive before and you suddenly, suddenly develop high blood pressure, right, with those signs of organ damage in pregnancy, then you most likely have preeclampsia. What is the big deal in having preeclampsia? Like, why should I be bothered if I'm diagnosed of preeclampsia? Or why should, should I be worried so much so that I have to look out and uh, check for signs and symptoms to make sure I don't have it? So, preeclampsia can cause a lot of complications to you. It can cause complications to the baby. Like I already mentioned earlier, it could cause organ damage to the mother. It could damage the kidneys, it could damage the lungs, right? It could damage so many vital organs in the body. Then, it could also harm your baby. So, your baby is not going to be getting enough nutrients, your baby will not get enough blood supply and complication of it is actually intrauterine fetal death so your baby could actually die in pregnancy another thing is that preeclampsia if left untreated besides the organ damage it could lead to a condition called eclampsia so eclampsia is normally characterized by all the preeclampsia symptoms that i mentioned plus seizures right and trust me seizures in pregnancy is something you don't want to have so i'll be talking about eclampsia next week so make sure you tune in for that one but today we are focusing on pre-eclampsia so the stage before you reach eclampsia as the name suggests what are possible symptoms that you might have if you have preeclampsia what are some possible symptoms that you might experience if you have preeclampsia so the funny thing is just like normal high blood pressure you may not even experience any symptom that you can actually pinpoint so but some lucky people might experience headaches so when you're having really severe headaches then you know that something is wrong some people might experience changes in the vision so their vision becomes blurry then if it's not like your vision was blurry before that, that you are using glasses or you use glasses and your vision is even more blurry than usual then you know that there's something wrong you should see a doctor Another possible symptom is swelling in the legs. So when you have swelling in the legs, something called edema. So that is also a sign of preeclampsia. But take note that swelling in the legs is normal during pregnancy, right? So we're not talking about maybe the swelling, gradual swelling that you had over time. We're talking about sudden swelling in the legs or in the face, right? Then that might be a sign of preeclampsia. Now, who are those at risk of actually having preeclampsia? So, if you previously had, had high blood pressure, you're at risk of this. If you've had preeclampsia in your previous pregnancies, you're at risk of this. If you are carrying twins or multiple births like triplets, quadruplets, you're at risk of preeclampsia. If your first degree relative, that is your sister, your mom, they had preeclampsia in their own pregnancy, you are also at risk of preeclampsia. However, even people that don't fall under these few risk factors that I've mentioned can still have preeclampsia. It's just that those on the, with these risk factors that I've mentioned have a higher risk of preeclampsia. The next question is now, if I have preeclampsia, what's the way forward? I've been diagnosed with preeclampsia, what's with the way forward? Now, the only definitive treatment for preeclampsia is to deliver your baby. 
no matter the age, the baby has to be delivered. So now the decision to deliver the baby will depend on how many weeks of gestation, how far you are gone in the pregnancy, and how much complications you are experiencing, how bad your blood pressure is, right? So for example, if maybe you are still early on in pregnancy, like 28 weeks, the doctor will give more time for your baby to grow, right? Because the more mature your baby is, the better for, for you, right? Because if you deliver a baby preterm, premature, the baby will have to be in the ICU and all that, right? And chances of survival for the baby is slimmer. But the older the baby is, the more mature the lungs, right? The higher the chance the baby has of survival. So if possible, doctors like to push as far as possible, right? To make sure that the baby is as old as they can get before delivering the baby. However, they're not going to do this at the risk of the mother. If your life is at risk for any reason, say you have really bad complications, like kidneys already damaged, you are starting to have seizures, right? Showing that it's starting to affect your brain as well. They're going to deliver that baby immediately, no matter the age, right? Sometimes it gets to a situation where we have to choose between the baby's life and the mother's life. And of course, you know, we will always choose the mother's life because we cannot lose the mother right unfortunately it's a it's a it's a tough decision to make it's between the devil and the deep blue sea right but mother's life always comes first right so if your complications for example if your bp is well controlled with the antihypertensives then they will push you further and see how long the pregnancy can go till the baby gets mature if you're lucky you get to full term but if your blood pressure is not responding to medications, it's poorly controlled, you're having severe organ damage, and your life is at great risk, no matter the age of your baby, even if the baby has no chance of survival, that baby is going to be delivered immediately to save your own life. Now, I know that this can be so heartbreaking thinking, especially those that have been trying for so long for pregnancy, and it's like, oh my God, I now have a chance to have pregnancy, and you're telling me you're going to deliver my baby now, and you're not sure if my baby is going to survive, right, just because you want to save me. Some people will be like, no, I don't want to try. But we just have to save the mom, right? It's something that we have to do. If the doctor decides that you're gonna deliver your baby before your baby gets to full term, they're gonna give your baby some drugs to help. So these are like corticosteroids, right? To help to the baby's lungs to mature on time. So it speeds up maturation of the lungs for the baby so that the baby has a higher chance of survival after it's delivered because it's able to breathe on its own, you know, able to perform oxygen exchange and all that on its own, right? So that's, that's why it's important that if you've been diagnosed with preeclampsia, you are seen regularly by your doctor. So you won't have the regular um, schedule of visits that other people have, right? Yours, you probably have closer monitoring. So you might have weekly visits or sometimes even twice a week. Or if you get so bad, you might even be on hospital admission just to make sure that you and your baby are fine, right? Because it could be dangerous for you, like I said, and it could be dangerous for your baby. So that's that about preeclampsia. But however, like I said, besides delivering the baby, there are things we can do to manage the situation pending when we are waiting for, you know, the baby to be old enough. Like I said, antihypertensive medications are an option. Sometimes if they suspect that you are at risk of um, seizures or eclampsia, then they give you anti-seizure medication as well, right? So those are the things that you have to bear in mind if you've been diagnosed with preeclampsia. Fear not, it's, um, it's something that is manageable, it's something that is treatable, something that many women have gone through and nothing happened to them. I actually uh, have had preeclampsia before just that in my case it was postpartum preeclampsia so my preeclampsia happened after i had given birth not during my pregnancy so that's another type of preeclampsia that you can have but i'll be talking about that in a totally different video which you should definitely look out for if you enjoyed watching this video so far don't forget to like subscribe and share with anyone you think might need to see this like i always say every pregnancy journey might be different but your pregnancy partner dr o remains the same see you next week